Hello everyone, my name is Drumat and today we're going to do not one but two games. I won't go through the entire replays but this is basically two games that I played today in solo queue as Tulia Jungle and we're going to see how I actually snowballed and I tried to completely dominate these games from some small mistakes that the opponent did. Now this is this will be a guide not only for the beginners but only for advanced uh, but also for the advanced players and this I mean I mean with this that uh, if you play jungle or if you want to generally learn how to snowball better with Tulia jungle this is for you and we're going to go real quick through builds and rooms just to get them out of the way and then I will try to mm, pinpoint the key moments that I did in those two games that uh, basically uh, made the game unlosable for us and we won both it was simple and uh, I want to showcase how to uh, play against properly the enemy jungler and that's how to enter the enemy jungler's mind basically and follow him around the map try to think what he's gonna do and try to just do better than him so let's start with it, it won't be full games uh, both of them are won at the factor of certain points it's useless to see both of those replays in entire in the uh, entirety so really quick for the builds and runes I played with face rush nimbus cloak transcendence water walking prince of my captain grace in these rune stats in both games I think but dark harvest I think would have worked against Lee as well in this scenario but in the other game I'm against Lila uh, Lilia whatever you pronounce that and she always play with face most of the time she plays with face rush against Leia so you will have to play too okay so we're going to see what kind of mistakes the enemy junglers did and how we profited out of them how we abused the mistakes and how we, we snowballed from there how we carried it we basically played ruthlessly we didn't give really any chance and we got flamed on the chat by the opponent which you cannot really see first of all you can see we're invading with the locks and they are not defending a thing that you will see in solo queue. This is Master Tier, by the way. Master Tier, Grandmaster, somewhere there I'm at 211 lil P. So you can see this kind of games where the top laner and jungler don't even bother to defend. So I'm moving here, right here at this spot. I'm starting uh, with the... Uh, Blue Smite, refillable, I'm going for uh, Ludens and Meja is in one of the games and Ludens and uh, normal build. Uh, I don't really recall if I went in the second game for uh, Cosmic Drive or Zonia, but that's something like you want. Sorg Shoes, Ludens or Lyandris, Cosmic Drive or Zonia, Rabadons, uh, Mejais if needed. And so I start here and I want you to see what hap what's happening here. Basically, basically I'm exactly at this point here. They have no idea that we're here and you can already see how this will go. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's why you defend these guys that's why you can abuse sometimes this kind of games and get free wins so they both flash they run away and we're just moving this out they listen wants to try to come close but not really and look what lee does lee does right now lee thinks i'm going i'm going to my uh blue so he goes exactly towards my blue my red instantly and as you can see here, we're going to meet him exactly at this point, as I was com completely sure that he was going to be here. I worded it there so that we don't really struggle with it, with, with the invade. So I was 100% safe, even though he had smite, uh, he didn't stick around to find out what will happen, so I just abused it. Now, now you're going to see, I'm just going to do a full clear as fast as I can, so I'm going to speed it up. Uh, and basically, I go to my blue, now I see... You can notice here Lego's bot and you can see what's happening. There is a fight. Uh, Tristana actually does Tristana things. Listen wastes his time basically here without actually farming too much. So he will probably go for the scuttle if I recall correctly, correctly or he will try to gang mid. Anyway, I go straight to his rights because I've seen him there. So the first thing that you have to notice is that I didn't go for this scuttle and I didn't go for Wolves or Gromp because that would have worked too. But the moment I went for blue because Lissin might have tried to come here around or do funny stuff because he lost one buff, maybe tried to recap. But I've seen him bot. And whenever you see the enemy jungler going Lissin, this is a Lissin OTP, this is a, a jungle main. He played like 200 games or 300 games in last season with jungle Lissin. So he's not a field player. He should have known what to do at this point. So he went bot, he decided to try to gang bot. My bot lane escaped. Even if he would have killed, he would still be behind. So I went here, he went to get the scuttle. It, it takes hours for him to actually finish the scuttle. And then I went to golem. So try to abuse whenever you have these kind of games. Try to abuse this kind of stuff. 
because you're going to get extremely ahead. And so after that, I moved here. He moves to my rights, which is good from his part. Uh, I don't think he knew I was actually at his rights. And I think he will move here. So I'm just doing my clear here. And uh, Lee Sin is waiting for some reason around here. I think he wants golems. And I think my bot checks it here. Yeah, I think I think Lux. Uh, no, no, really? Okay, I think Lux seen him here. Let me see. Did he fail something? I think Lux seen it. Oh, or that got out of the bash for no reason. Anyway, I got my topside jungle and I'm moving straight towards him. And I see him here that he does this. I just flash because I have Nimbus Cloak. And we get the first blood onto the Tristana. And at this point, I have 33 CS, double the amount of Lee Sin, which shouldn't happen at this elo. I ping my mid laner that I'm going for the rights. And so uh, I see this. I wait here, the Lee Sin, but he doesn't really come. So it doesn't matter. I move back and I go here. I go around, move a bit. I waste my time because I see this fight. So I try to capitulate on this to see whatever is happening. So we go here again. We abuse the Lee Sin with the full combo. He has nothing. He has flash in two seconds. We abuse that as well. We got the kill on Lee again. 10 CS, 11 CS ahead. Eloy wasted teleport. Seraphine wasted flash. We dismantle them completely. At this point, I ping my top laner if she can push so that he can come and help me. And I move straight to his red. I don't let him do I know he would come here. I'm 100% sure he would come here because his uh, red is up. So look what I do. Instant full combo. And he didn't even bother to flash. He's tilted at this point. I understand him. Uh, I go here. Vagar is low HP. I go here too because I didn't know that. I was scared. I had no flash. I just recalled at this point. So I got him. He goes here. Level 3. I am level 5. As you can see, I am very far ahead of him, half a level already. He's making level 4 out of this, but I'm doing a full clear now. Uh, I, no, I'm doing the golems there. Okay, and then I'm moving red. I'm moving, I'm level 6 now, two levels ahead at this point. Right to there, to the blue buff and to this zone to do the clear on this side of the map. So we get this. And then what we do? We don't wait. We go, uh, we want to go here for a top game, but we can't. So we move towards walls. And as you can see, we power farm. If you are having advantage against a non-power farming jungler, you have to just farm and you will win uh, regardless. So power farm, power farm, power farm, as you can see. Listen did the full clear as well. And what happens is that... Yeah, I failed that, right? What happens is that I tried to stay on top of CS. So I go to the scuttle because I see that it just spawned. I see Lee Sin again. Surprise, surprise. We get the kill. I play with phase rush. I escape the Vagar cage. That's why I played with phase rush in the first place. Go for the free, um, go for the free scuttle, go for the free herald. Insanely, insanely good combination. Then we moved up for a gank, which should have gone well. I uh, probably just failed here the calculation onto the tentacles. As you can see here, I'm getting, uh, yeah, I'm getting slapped by a tentacle. <laughs> I could have done better that, but it's fine. First death in our team. Listen goes bot and gets a kill. And then Tristana escapes. Uh, and that's another mistake that uh, he basically did that. He's so tilted now. It's 0-5. Every gang that he did was basically in his... Uh, well, against him or everything that he did, he, he once you go into opponent your opponent say once you have the slightest bit of advantage against someone who's not a farmer or even against a farmer, once you're ahead this Lia at any point of the game, you can enter their head and you can just abuse these kind of mistakes because the opponent is like my man. I'm going to flame my team. They are bad. That's what he did. He wrote on chat 24/7, and it's most of the time the opponent will tilt at this point, and you can abuse that. And now that I died against Iloy, I know he just flashed, so I can go again. I can be disgusting, and I know she has no ult. I know she has nothing. So what do I do? I go here. I get the free kill. I push the lane. I put the herald down, and at this point, game is basically over. Listen comes to death, but Listen plays only catch now. He can longer catch me because I'm two levels ahead in power farming him insanely well. And we're gonna pop this out and move away, move faster. Relevant stuff. Farm mid because my core keeping me too. Whenever you can get this CS, 20 CS advantage. And I also have my entire jungle up for me. 
I go for a Ultia, I get the kill onto the Jin Jinx, and then I move for more fights, because we win now everything, because Lee Sin cannot really counter us, cannot stop us, even though they're Ilaoi and Vegar and Jinx and Seraphine plays well, you can press tab, 6 of their deaths are on their jungler, so we just abuse the fact that we're stronger at that side of the map. Now there is a lot of nonsense now happening, and I lost a bit of farming time, so we we just uh, get the Eloy ult off, we farm a little bit more, as you can see here, farm this, farm that, don't waste time as much, uh, gen uh, do as much farming as you can in between this kind of stuff. So we see, we see Lee Sin on mid, he does what he can, basically the entire kills, the all the kills that Lee Sin got in this game, I think it was with his ult and Vega ult combined, and when you do these two ults, on a single person you kill them you don't really have anything else to get like Eloy cannot really do anything after that especially since my Corki and Fiora are very fed same with Tristana so it's very hard for them to come back when they use two ults just for a Corki which will come back and they won't have the ults without them getting any objectives whatsoever so we keep this uh, level advantage as you can see we take farm whenever we can two levels advantage continues and we recall now, and I think you get the point of this. Uh, going here, doing another counter gank, Lissin failed it, and this is the last thing that I want to show, because after this is just pointless. Now, my team knows that Lissin is tilted, and so we just keep abusing that. So whatever happened here, Lissin got instantly the Tristana. Congratulations. And after that, Corky just killed him and we have absolutely no way of losing this if we are pretty much careful because on the Lux Q we can dismantle them. Now, Vegar used everything and Corky survived. That means I'm not afraid to go back here and Lux is not afraid to throw a Q. So you can see she dodged barely that, Fiora is also teleporting in. Even if Eloy teleported in with Fiora here being so ahead, we boosted Fiora so far ahead with that gank we cannot really lose this. So this is for this game, 0-7 Lee Sin, 50 CS gap almost, uh, 2 levels or so, 3 levels soon, uh, very close to 3 levels, and complete control of the game. That's what I want you to do, guys. Whenever you see these moments, do not give random bounties, do not go for random fights, farm when you know you win by farm, go towards the lanes that you can go to uh, and carry it, because mid, for example, you would have never win 2 versus 2 regardless, because Vegar has the cage and ult, Lee Sin has Q and ult. But on top, uh, Fiora can just W anything that comes from them, and if I'm careful to deflash from Ilaoi, we can 2 versus 2 anytime, same on bot, considering the comps. Just go to the lanes where you have the most advantage. So this is the game, the first game, and I'm moving straight to the second one. I'm going to uh, do a smooth transition now, it's going to suck. And let me just so so here we are into the second game as you can see by the team comps we really have no prior on top and mid early on only on bot and we are against Lilia. basically Lilia with dark harvest i expected her to play with face rush but playing whoever has face rush in this matchup i think is going to be better off unless one of those unless the guy with dark harvest gets some random kills without reason in lower elos probably dark harvest works in higher elo probably face rush because you can reposition better but what you need to know is that i use that face rush to reposition myself to actually kill the guy his name is rengar but he's not uh he was probably a Rengar OTP, but I've seen he has a lot of matches on Lila this season, so he's, I'm going to count him as a Lila OTP. And whatever happens this game is that, uh, basically, she starts red, I start blue. She thinks I'm going to probably gank bot first, I think I'm going to probably gank bot first, but for some reason... She tries to count again or tries to engage first on bot. And you're going to see that because of a Vegar teleport, we massively win it and her life becomes miserable. Basically, this is a matchup, a farming matchup, in which whichever champion gets early advantage by any fights or CS gaps or scuttles or anything will be ahead. And that makes sense because these two champions are fairly similar. They both want to farm to reach their items to carry the game. So in this context, what I want to do is focus around my lane that is Draven and, so and uh, Soraka, I forgot the goat's name. 
and try to get the Draven ahead because that's the only lane where I'll have advantage. Vagar has a teleport so he will just come back to the lane and he'll be fine and on top we have a ghost and flash filled Nasus. I just wrote on chat please 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 don't die early and pinged him like a maniac whenever I thought that Lilao is going to gank top. And we're going to be extremely fine by this tactic strictly because he did play safe, he was 20 CS behind, he understood what he has to do, Vagar was 20 CS behind, it's not a problem strictly because we put Draven so far ahead that they couldn't really uh, catch us and myself also and Lilia, Lilia being behind just made us win by default because Nasus outscales, Vagar outscales, this was a word also from Yone. And so we abuse the early game onto our prior lane because Soraka with Draven will always beat I think most of stuff unless, well that's an AP Maokai also not a full tank Maokai so we're good on that. It's very hard for my bot to lose right? We also have an OTP there. So, uh, I'm doing my blue start, I'm moving towards Gromp, I'm moving towards Walls, I'm doing a full clear which is absolutely standard behavior, normal start and if you can see Lilia is doing the same thing but a bit faster, because that's what Lilia does, because that's, that's what's her speed really. And so, she moves bot, there isn't really an engage from the guy, I expect here a flash from Maokai but for some reason he doesn't. And so they back off. After this queue, they backed off. But here is a Vagar actual, actual teleport. Now, I want you to see this Maokai thing. I'm not sure, but Maokai could have flashed much earlier here. Like right now. But then again, my bot would just flash and push him away. So regardless, this fight is lost for them here. Because Lilia keeps following. This was a bad gank in terms of... Well, overestimation, because Vega realized that. Vega realized he could TP there. I realized I could chase. They exhausted, so they'd be careful. And look, this is a cage that just wins the game right here. <laughs> okay, three flashes and one kill onto this. I know Lilo is going to come straight to this. I move here. I get the free kill. I don't mind it. I see the Yone. I flash out, because, well, Yone stuff. And then I just continue to abuse whatever Lila tries to do. I'm going to recall here, I know Lilia goes for straight scuttle and I know I cannot really catch her on to doing so, but I could have. I really could have. I see now that I really could have stopped Lilia because she has no stun to actually stop it. But then again, I know I will win this matchup if I just power find my way through. So I decided to go straight to right, straight to golems, power farm, power farm, power farm, do it again. And you can see I'm basically behind in CS at this point. But I can just gank bot. <laughs> because my bot is now ahead. We keep putting kills on Draven. And I know he would have won this. I know they would have won the 2 versus 2. I was first here. I know they have a Maokai. I know I can abuse the Maokai. And so I just did that. We move here. We waste a bit more time because we see the Lila here. We try to dive a bit. We don't really force it. Because we know Yone is coming. And I want you to see that as well. Lila here tried to buy time for the Yone to come. Yone just started patting now towards bot. We didn't really know that, but we had an idea that he moved. Okay, we see the ult from Lilia here. I just cast full Q and I'm killing her because of the face rough repositioning systems. Now I W perfectly here the Yone and he can still catch someone. As you can see, uh, Soraka dodges it perfectly, but it's not a problem. We lose some uh, Draven here, but he's already so far ahead and I get some CS. I'm not ahead in farm, but I do have my full jungle up. And now I could start thinking for two versus two top. And so we see Lilia. Lilia actually doing better than me in farm, but worse than me in ganks. Because she kept moving bot where she shouldn't have. Here we see a fight. We see this. We see Riven uh, trying to force it. And Asus having no ult. And I know Riven might want to dive. I move to my blue. I know Riven might come here. I'm 100% sure that she might try to dive here. Because she can just EQ. I died to this a thousand times. So I'm just coming here. She for some reason didn't bother to E away. We just got the kill. I'm just countering Lila. That's what I do. Wherever she goes, I go. Because I know at this point that I'm stronger than her. And I just abuse that. She farms better. And she will always probably farm a little bit better than you. Because Lila yeah, got a bit nerfed. But what you can do is just follow her on the map and absolutely dismantle her every time. Now I see some free farm here, so I move mid. I see Yone going bot, so I move bot. It's as simple as that. Casting ult here, 
getting straight back into the fight, instant EQ, look at the damage that I just did on Lilia again, I'm following Lilia wherever she goes, she just ulted two people, I know that I'm a bit late to the party, but it doesn't matter, because look, look at my damage onto her, because I deny her instantly and move her away from the game. I'm 4-0, she's 0-3. I'm just abusing her uh, continuity because Mauka is the one at failed. I failed here. Here, Mauka is the one who ints basically, but she's following, so she ints too. So I'm just abusing both of their int in my favor. And if Lilia just ints early and I get kills, there is absolutely no way for them to actually catch up. And here I go because I see Maokai on lane. I keep abusing. I see him going for that vision ward. I get a free kill because that's what Lilia can do. I move to the scuttle here, I get it, I power farm my way through, and then I try to get Nasus ahead. Nasus is level 9 soon. At level 9, you know that he will be stronger, especially if he did not int, you'll know that he'll be stronger than the Riven. So I move here through a very weird path, and I try to position myself to do a full combo here. I failed it, it's fine. I know Riven is half HP, I know Lilia might also be coming. So I move here and I do the mistake of sitting on top of a word without knowing. So I thought that Riven would word somewhere else because she could likely escape any gank I do simply with EQ. And so she jumps on me fully. It's not a problem because Nasus is already at the point where he can just do this. And we didn't kill the Yone here because we were unlucky. We could have, but it's a first to in our favor. But in the meanwhile, on bot, Draven is 315. He destroys 20 CS ahead, extremely far ahead. On mid, it doesn't matter whatever happens because Vega will be ahead and on top it now. And we just ended the game on top as well now with this because Riven can no longer beat Nasus with ult. A level 10 Nasus or so. And so now I just power farm because the game is basically over. I failed that one. That's the only thing I failed this game because I didn't thought that Riven will flash on me. And also I didn't flash it in time because I could have escaped with my flash. I still could have lived if I played a bit better. Now I move towards this scuttle. I try to gain control of the map. I go top. I ult here properly. I don't leave uh, the guy up. And you'll see I'm a bit lucky here as well. Because uh, Riven almost kills me but not really. This is just because I'm far ahead and I'll just abuse that so much. I just abuse... I, Whenever you're ahead, you're going to have a much easier life because you have that extra HP from the fact that you're ahead and you're going to live in that micro fights that you just seen. Now, Lilia just got caned. Maokai just got caned by the Draven and we cannot really lose from this point. 0 10 on jungle and bot support on support strictly because we play like this. Now, let's reverse it a bit. Let's think we have the Yone and let's think it that Vega has the teleport and the Lilia. We would have had a Lilia gank here on bot and arguably nothing would have happened because Vega would have never teleported because I would have been here and we would have pushed them back but we would have reacted faster to the Vega teleport and we would have not get caught here randomly because I would have misplayed to go towards the scuttle when I'm low HP against the fed Lilia against the Lilia with a flash which she did if you think it she came here and I had flash she didn't she had half HP I had full uh, and so at this point I wouldn't have even bought her, I would have tried to play around mid, I would have tried to play around top, and um, if I had the Yone I would have tried to play against, uh, around mid I mean, and if I had the River in our team and the Nas, I would have probably tried to play around anyone because we would have had 3 lanes, but uh, with the Draven Soraka, even against uh, Vega with Teleport I mid, mean, you still could have 3 versus 4 of them in some contexts, because Soraka and Draven is so strong. And so there is a lot of small things that you could see here. I also stole rights. I got finally advantage after a long time. I got two drakes and, <laughs> and that happened. So remember guys, try to find these small corners, small moments and never let your guard down after that. Just snowball as hard as you can, farm as much as you can, go for the lanes that you have prior. Don't try, if Nasus would have died, for example, on top, one versus one at level two three to the Riven solo. There is cases where that happens. I would have even go there if I didn't know I have flash and he had ult after level nine only. Before that, I wouldn't even have tried to go there. I know he would be eventually useful, 
And he would probably stop painting after one or two kills with ghosts anyway. Because he can escape, he becomes just tankier and stronger. And so I would have focused onto the fact that I could have just uh, go towards bot. Go towards uh, mid, maybe help him to counter ganks, but not to dire ganks. Because we wouldn't win to dire ganks anyway. So that's it. That's what you gotta do. Learn from this stuff and focus. Do your thing and good luck playing Talia Jungle on the Summer Swift. I'm going to do more Talia videos and more other types of guides. I enjoy this. I love you all and see you next time, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Well, it's not a weekend yet, but it's Thursday. It's soon, so it's fine. See you next time, guys. Goodbye.